Question four. There's been a couple of people asking about this question, so I'm going to go through it in quite a bit of detail. Students, I think, find questions like these uh, rather hard. So an ancient sealed flask contains a liquid which is assumed to be water. So there we have a flask, and inside is some liquid. An archaeologist asks a scientist, I think many archaeologists would be annoyed that they weren't classed as scientists, but uh, to de determine the volume of liquid in the flask without opening the flask, the scientists decide to use a radioactive isotope of sodium-24 sodium that decays with a half-life of 14.8 hours. She first mixes a compound that contains 3.0 times 10 to the minus 10 grams of sodium-24 with uh, 1,500 centimeters cubed of water, and then injects 15 centimeters cubed of it into the flask. So, if that much sodium is put in that much water, so here we have 1,500 centimeters cubed of water, and we've put in 3.0 times 10 to the minus 10 grams of Na20, then what we're doing is we're taking off 15 centimeters cubed of it, which is one hundredth of that amount. So if we mix this thoroughly, we're going to get one hundredth of that. So we're going to get 3.0 times 10 to the minus 12 grams left. Just make sure I'm on the page, yeah. So show that initially that many atoms are injected into the flask. Remember it's this 15 centimeters cubed which is injected into the flask. So we need the number of moles will equal the mass of material that we have divided by the relative atomic mass. And remember, rather bizarrely, this one's a weird one, it's in grams rather than in kilograms. So that's why that's given to you in grams. So the mass of the material is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 10. I'm going to divide by the 100 at the end. Divided by the relative atomic mass, which is 24, because it's sodium 24. And we get that as the number of moles. So the number of moles is 3 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 24, so it's 1.25 times 10 to the minus 11 moles. Okay, so N is going to equal the number of moles times by Avogadro's number, so that's equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 11 times by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, that's on your data sheet, so times by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and you get this, which you'll notice is 100 times bigger than the answer that you're after. So that's 7.525 times 10 to the 12 atoms, um, and then we need to divide by 100, but only 100th of the solution is injected. So that divide this by 100 and we get times 10 to the 10, 7.525 times 10 to the 10 atoms. Okay, show that the initial activity of the solution that is injected into the flask is about 1 times 10 to the 6 Becquerel. So activity is equal to n times by lambda, and that's on your formula sheet in the section on nuclear physics. Their activity is n lambda. It's the decay constant, which is equal to the log of 2 divided by the half-life. So the activity is equal to the number of atoms times by log of 2 divided by the half-life. Now we have to put this in SI, because this is an SI unit. So we've got 14.8 hours there. We've got that many atoms. So we've got 7.525 times 10 to the 10 times by 
the natural log of 2 and we divide that by this time here, the half-life, which is 14.8, but we must convert that into base units. So that's times by 3,600 to convert hours into seconds. So here goes, turn the calculator on, this should be my previous answer, yes, times by the log of 2, divided by 14.8, divided by 3,600, um, that's in, let's just press ENG, so what's that? Activity is equal to 9.7896 times 10 to the 5, which is approximately equal to 1 times 10 to the 6 Becquerel. So we need to write the activity to one extra decimal place at least, so we'll go for 9.78 times 10 to the 5. There we go. Always got to write a show that answer to more precision than that there. Four part three. I think this is the one that people find the hardest. She waits for three and a half hours to allow the injected solution to mix thoroughly with the liquid, then extracts 15 centimeters cubed of the flask from the flask and measures the activity, which is found to be 3,600 becquerel. Calculate the total activity of the sodium in the flask after three and a half hours, and hence determine the volume of the liquid in the flask. Let's do this bit first, calculate the total activity. So this is our formula sheet. We're going to be using this equation here, but we're going to be using the activity form of it rather than the number of um, nuclei form, which is this one. So you just put A's instead of the N's. Lambdas will cancel when you make that substitution. So you can do this. So you have A the activity at any time is equal to the activity at time equals naught times by e to the minus lambda, which is the decay constant, which we worked out over here. It's that times by t. Okay. So the activity at the beginning is going to be this. So it's 9.78 times 10 to the 5 Becquerel times by e to the minus lambda. Now that is ln of 2 divided by, and then we need to put the time in here. So uh, the half-life time, which is 14.8, 14.8 hours. Now we could put that in base units times 3,600, um, but I'll show you we don't need to in a second. So we put the time that we're waiting here, which is 3.5, and because those two are in the same unit, it doesn't matter that these aren't in base units, because if you wanted to change that into seconds, you put times 3,600 and you change that into seconds, it would be times 3,600 and you times 3,600 so would just cancel. I'll just write it in for you in pencil. So they just cancel, so you don't actually even need to write them in in the first place. So this is going to give us our new activity. Oops. So we've got our previous answer, and we're going to times that by um, e to the power minus ln of 2, close bracket, times by 3.5 divided by 14.8, close bracket, is equal to that fraction there, which is 8.31 times 10 to the power 5 Becquerel. So that's the activity that is left. Okay, so how do we then find the volume of liquid in the flask? Well, if we go back to the flask again, so there was the flask with its original volume that we don't know. So that was the volume V. We've now put in an extra 15 centimeters cubed with the sodium 24 in. We wait for some time 
and our new volume is now V plus 15, but the sodium has now mixed with everything. And we're going to be extracting this 15 centimeters cubed from here. So the activity of this sodium here used to be in this bit that we injected, and that's that. It's now spread out over the entire flask, and it's now reduced to, th and, and then we take this little bit out, and it's reduced to that. And because it's evenly spaced, then the fraction of that divided by that must be the same as the fraction of that divided by the volume, which is the original volume of the flask plus the 15 extra. Okay? So, the volume, finding the volume. Right, we have that the ratio of um, 15 divided by the volume plus 15, that's all in centimeters cubed. So that's that bit that I've extracted as a fraction of the whole lot, which is the original volume plus the extra bit that we squirted in over here, has got to equal, well, it's that bit as a proportion of all of that. Well, here, it's got to equal the amount of radioactivity from that bit, which is 3,600, as a proportion of the total, which is this, which is 8.31 times 10 to the 5. Okay. So we need to rearrange that equation, and we get um, V plus 15, moving that up there, is equal to 15 times by 8.31 times 10 to the 5, divided by 3,600. So we've got that, times by 15, divided by 3,600, is equal to that. We then take that 15 away, and we get that. So V is equal to 3, 4, 4, 7 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's quite a complicated question, so let me just explain it one more time. When you inject it in, you inject all of the radioactivity into this bit here. But when you allow it to spread, when you allow it to um, thoroughly mix, then that radioactivity spreads out over the entirety of the liquid inside the flask. You have to account for the fact that three and a half hours have passed, so you have to reduce the activity based on the half-life and that's the activity decay equation there. So that's the new activity that you would expect to be spread over the entire flask there. If we take 15 centimeters cubed out of the flask again and measure it, then we get that much activity. So that has that volume as a fraction of the total volume. And the total volume of liquid in the flask was the volume of liquid in the flask before we started plus the extra bit that we added in there. Okay, which is why that 15 is there. Right. Question 4.4. The archaeologist obtained an estimate for the volume knowing that a similar empty flask has a mass of 1.5 kilograms and the, that the mass of the flask and liquid was 5.2 kilograms. Compare the estimate that the archaeologist could obtain from these masses with the volume calculated in this part and account for any differences. Okay. So the mass of liquid is just the difference between the full flask and the um, potentially empty flask. So 5.2 take away 1.5 which is equal to 3.7 uh, 3 kilograms.
Now, water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed. So that is approximately 3,700 centimeters cubed of water. So these two answers are different and we're supposed to compare the estimate that the archaeologist could obtain with the volume and account for any differences. Well, there are loads of things that could be different. The flask could be a slightly different shape. It could have changed its mass over the years. Um, it could have a different amount of liquid in. So uh, I'm just going to say that this is the this figure here, 1.5 kilograms, is an average for the mass of flask. So um, it could well be different. Okay, see there it says average mass. So that's the suggestion that I've picked out. And that's question four.